Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series of videos about blueprints and scripting in Unreal. And in this one, I'm going to do the the first concepts in looking at this, the visual scripting system that Unreal offers you. So I've created a blueprint class. This is a third-person template. Uh, this is a blank blueprint with nothing in it. I'm just going to open it up in the editor. Um, uh, to show you the nothing in here, no objects, I'm just going to do some very simple scripting uh, and talk about what I'm doing in quite a bit of detail. Uh, so actually, uh, just the other thing to show you is that there is one instance of the class sitting here in the level. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is at the moment, I'm not going to put any op visible objects in there. So let's go back to the editor. So this is uh, what's called a graph, um, and a graph is a, uh, a visual representation of uh, some behavior, um, some programming or some scripting. Um, and within a graph, which is actually the visual, the visual thing that you can see, uh, you can zoom in and can zoom out, you may have more than one script. Uh, and a script is an interconnected set of nodes and wires. So this box here is what's called a node. And Boxes do things. So a node is something that actually you know, creates some data or has an effect. Uh, and the way that you connect these nodes together is using wires, and they uh, look like lines. So I've got um, this node here is uh, a node that responds to an event. I'm going to do more about events in a, a video coming up. Um, just to tell you that this one starts, this one fires off at the point where the game starts playing. So it's event begin play. Um, and if I want to make something happen in this blueprint as a result of uh, game starting, I can then drag out from here. So this is a pin, it's called. And as you highlight over it with the mouse, it, um, it highlights. And if I left click and drag, it starts pulling a white line off. And this line is called a wire. And when I drop it, in the sense of letting go of the left mouse button, it then brings up a, uh, a dialog box asking me what node I want to connect to. Um, and in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a node called Play Sound at Location. Play Sound. And th so this is typical for lots of Unreal systems that there's a, a box at the top where you can type some text in to narrow down your choices. Um, it's also worth telling you in this. Uh, dialogue here that there's a context sensitive switch and if you switch that off you get more options but often it'll be the case that those options aren't legitimate options at this particular point in time so it's got some intelligence going on behind the scenes as to what it gives you in context sensitivity I'm going to switch that back on because it's mostly useful um, and I've typed in play space sound and I haven't quite finished typing it and you can see play sound at location has come up here uh, so I'm going to click on that and that creates another node for me which is the play sound at location function node uh, now there's some data that I need for this uh, which it needs to know what sound to play and it needs to know where so I don't actually care because it's going to be an ambient sound uh, so I don't care where it plays uh, but I do care, care what I play. And if I click on here, uh, it will give me a list of all the available sounds. So this is expecting information to tell it which sound to play. Uh, and uh, you could say it's expecting data of a sound type. Um, and this list that it brings up when I click on here is a list of all the sounds that are available in this project. And these are all part of the starter content. And so I actually want um, one that is called Starter Music Q. And I'll deal with sound in a later and sound videos. Uh, if you want the maybe advanced options for some of these uh, nodes, and there's a drop down box here, and that gives me more, uh, more options there, but I'm not going to use any of those, so I'm going to shrink that back down again. Okay. So the first. Uh, thing to notice here or uh, that I need to tell you is that this white wire is what's called an execution wire and so 
the white wires show you the flow of which node happens in time. So at the point where uh, play begins, this node is fired, and that starts this script. I can connect more nodes with wires onto the end of this script. Um, and this white wire here says the next thing to do is this play sound at location. Let's actually uh, go back to the uh, to the uh, level editor and let's click play. Go. And that object, as you can see, doesn't appear in the world, uh, but that script has run and it's playing that sound. And it's triggered the sound and it, and it continues to play. Uh, and we would play, we stop playing the game, it actually stops the music playing. Let's go back into that script. So it's a very, very simple script. We've just got two nodes and one execution wire here. What we're going to do is we're going to drag out at the end. You see, there's another pin here. And this is what happens next. So you've got a sequence of things going on. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to have a time delay. Uh, so I'm going to use the delay node. Um, and we could, once again, we've got some information here. It wants to know how long to delay for. And we could just put a number in here. I'm going to use this to show you another kind of wire, which is uh, a data wire. And I'm going to create a number a number node over here, so I'm just going to pull, I've pulled this backwards, as you can see, and dropped, and I'm going to type in literal. <clears throat> and then there's a node here, which is make literal float. And this just gives me um, the ability to put a number in. Actually, I might as well have done it in the node, but um, I'm going to do it here instead, just to show you this. So this wire, you'll see, is a different color, and this is green. And colored wires are data wires. And in my head, the, the white wires push forwards and execution comes through here. So it's going to start play, play sound at location, then do this delay, and then we might put something else after this. And then when it hits this node, it says, well, I need some data. And uh, the way that I think about it is that it then asks for this data, and it sucks the data in through the, the data wires. Um, so <laughs> I, in my mind has a particular way of thinking, but I think of this as being kind of backwards, and um, it goes back along. And you might have more complex things here, um, and I'll show you in a, a later video about how to do manipulation of numbers and stuff with your data. Uh, and we're going to add another thing on the end here, which is going to be a print string. Uh, so this is a node which is just used in uh, debugging mode, uh, which gives you a bit of text on the screen. Again, I'm going to drag out here and create a literal, a literal string. Uh, a string is a text type of object, and I'm going to type in a value here, which is I'm going to call it, thank you for watching. Um, and I am going to use one of the extended. Uh, values here because the duration of this is quite short at two seconds. I'm going to make that appear for 10 seconds. So that will appear in uh, text in the top left of the screen when we play. But these things are going to happen in order. So it's going to start play, uh, then it'll play the sound, which will kick that sound off playing. The sound continues to play as the script goes through. Well, the next thing is this delay, which should be a five second delay. So uh, it will wait at this node until that delay is finished, and then it will move on to print string, which should print in the top left corner. Let's see if that does what I expect it to do. So click play. We've got the music playing, and uh, the text hasn't appeared yet. There it is. Thank you for watching up there at the left-hand side. So that's a uh, very simple script. Uh, I'm just going to go back into it and re-emphasize these boxes are called nodes. These lines are called wires. The white, white, white lines are the execution lines. <clears throat> so execution travels from left to right along the white wires. And then when nodes need data, they ask for it on these colored wires. This is a pink, so the different colors represent different data types. This is a string data type. This is a floating point number data type. That is a basic introduction to scripting. Um, 
if any of that didn't make sense, please rewind this and play it through again, or find somebody else who might explain it better than I do. But you need to understand these concepts if you're going to get to grips with Blueprint Scripting. But that's it from me for now. Mm -hmm.